Uh, Mr. Lepofsky, are you making the opening statement? Thank you. There is common ground between every group and individual who has presented to you and every speaker from every party who have addressed this bill that disability poverty is absolutely unacceptably high and must be eliminated. There is common ground that legislation to create the Canada Disability Benefit must be passed quickly. We don't need to debate those points. We need to talk about what needs to be done so that this bill achieves what the minister said in her very first statement on the bill at second reading, to achieve the commitment that no person with a disability should live in poverty in Canada. This bill does not ensure that. We propose amendments that will. It is undisputable that under this bill, there need never be a Canada disability benefit. Or if there is, that it, it, there's no assurance it will exceed a dollar a month. There is no assurance that it will be maintained from one cabinet to the next or one government to the next. There is no assurance that people with disabilities uh, will, uh, who need it will all be covered. There is only one policy decision in this bill that is clear. And that is that upwards of a third of all people with disabilities over the age of 15 are assured that they cannot receive this benefit no matter how poor they are. We propose amendments that will speed up getting money into people's pockets because as drafted now, this bill is a formula for that happening slowly, not quickly. To support what we are tabling, and that I will quickly summarize, we've tabled with you an open letter already signed by 37 organizations drawn from six provinces, a wide spectrum of disabilities, national and very local organizations uniting around an agenda of six reforms. The government has uh, committed itself to the maxim, nothing about us without us. This letter is the us that the government must listen to. First, this bill cuts out anyone over the age uh, that is to be defined as working age. Upwards of a third of people with disabilities over the age of uh, 15 are themselves over the age of 65. And that makes sense because aging is the greatest cause of disability. 35% of people like me who are visually impaired are, over the, are 65 or older or over the age of 65. They are cut out of this bill completely. We ask you to change that allow Cabinet to create a Canada disability benefit that leaves no impoverished person with a disability behind. We, in, in support of that, I say something with which no one can disagree. Disability poverty does not end at age 65. There is no reason why a person, if they get the Canada Disability Benefit before that age, should ever experience a fall off, a reduction in their income upon achieving the age of 65. Number two, this bill should set, as you just heard, some kind of minimum or standard to ensure to, to assure to impoverished people with disabilities what they're going to get. Now, the open letter talks about a minimum dollar amount which cabinet can raise but cannot go below. Another way of focusing on this that I invite you to consider is to have the bill also designate what the ultimate net income people with disabilities should be entitled and assured to receive. 
between what they get from the province and what the Canada Disability Benefit adds to it. Let people know what the end goal is, and then Cabinet, in making regulations, can fill in the details. Third, this, and, and by the way, as well, this bill does not assure that the benefits will be indexed to inflation. We call for that indexing to be assured by legislation. Next, this bill does not set a mandatory start date for the money to start flowing. If we want to get it to people quicker, enact a start date now and drive the government and the bureaucracy to meet that uh, deadline. To that end, the bill requires ca or permits cabinet to make regulations, doesn't require them to ever do so, and if they don't, there's no benefit. Set a mandatory deadline. We folks, all of us, are driven by deadlines. So are they. Next, we've heard about no clawbacks, but all the minister has told us is she's trying to negotiate agreements with provinces. The problem is those agreements may not be enforceable. Or another government may get enacted in a pro elected in a province who decides, you know what, we don't want to comply with that agreement. We're backing out of it. This bill should be amended to provide enforceable ways to ensure that clawbacks do not occur. Finally, and you've heard it from many on this, this bill does not ensure that people with disabilities will truly have a voice in the regulations. Now, it's nice that the bill in its, its preamble says, recites the principle about nothing about us without us, but nothing requires the government to consult with us. But more importantly, I accept the government will now, but that doesn't assure that the next government will and the one after that. But more importantly, it's not enough to just have websites where we give input or we talk to public officials. We need to be able to talk directly to those making the decisions. And we need to do so with the government making public the spectrum of options to be considered. Thank you, Mr. Lepofsky. I look forward to your questions, and I welcome the opportunity to fill out these ideas. Thank you. Thank you.